Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. This is the first time I'm seeing you since you are an engaged woman. Yes, you're right, Heather. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, I'm happy to be here, too. I, I guess I should tell people at home what that thing was in my hair. Oh, yes. I guess, uh, see, I'm used to seeing you like that at 3.30 in the morning. I, a and lot of people yeah, are. Yeah. Usually, I have the full head. That was just one little roller. I just took it out before we walked into the studio. <laughs> You gotta have your hair gotta looking on point, fluff, right? You know? I've never been a curler gal. I feel like I should invest in some, though. I, I bet you don't need them. You have really nice thick hair. Mine is fine, so I need all the volume and texture I can get. So fun. <laughs> You're so fun. All right, so, um, Selena, I, you weren't here this day. I know you were probably watching, though, but we joked I a couple was. weeks ago about this work from home set. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this? We shared this picture with you. Yeah, I, this was so cool, but this wasn't. Real? The, when you guys talked about it. No, no. See, if you look in the corner, it says ages three plus includes crying baby and wine bottles. <laughs> so Fisher Price uh, now has come out with their own home office set. Yeah, and I like this. It's funny because when I am working at home and when my niece Ellie comes over, she wants to, <laughs> she wants to do what I'm doing. She wants to copy and type well, and work right. from home. And that's what this basically is for kids to be like mommy and daddy. Oh, goodness so gracious. So there is not <laughs> wine included, unfortunately. No, not in this one. But they, no. it's nice. They do have a little headset. It looks like they have a latte or a coffee to go mug. <laughs> Oh, what are we it's teaching nice. our children? I know, <laughs> but I think it's pretty cool. It, you know what we are teaching them? We're teaching them that we adapt and we move forward. That's, exactly. what, we're, right? That's what we're teaching and them. And I like doing it. I, I, I can't even imagine a lot of the parents. I mean, even when you did work from home, I remember that one week you worked all week. It was so hard. It's such a challenge. So this could keep them occupied. A I know a, bit. a lot of people have enjoyed working from home, and there are some people who have found it to be more of a challenge. I found it to be extremely challenging, but. Yeah. You know, in my situation, my kids didn't think work was work. You know, yeah, they, they yeah, they don't understand. It they yet. just wanted mommy to get ones. her a drink. Yep. yep. Oh yeah. That's well, all. Earlier this week, I had so much fun with Cody Sable. We love Cody. He's yeah. been in the studio so many times. This is a lot of fun for us to watch. Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. We actually got rained out. We, Cody and I were soaked, so we ended up going underneath the tunnel at Heinz Field. But in the live shot, he was. Finishing up this beautiful painting of Steelers kicker Chris Boswell. So it was almost finished. It was about 85% done when we were with him on Tuesday. And he just gave it to him two nights ago. So this is the big reveal. Oh, I love it. And it really was neat to watch him work. And I know that, you know, the rain didn't really help the process. We were hoping to see the finished product by the end of your, your live hits yeah. at that day. But, yeah, still neat nonetheless. No, but I he. I, Cody's one of my favorite people, and it's so interesting and cool to watch him at work. I, I'm just not okay. artistic at all, so this I don't is, get it. This is what David and I wanted to know. Were you really painting? Did you really help? So, uh, technically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cody said, why don't you get a brush and you could help me? And I didn't even see which color it was already dipped into. So I started painting over a black color, of course, and my brush was orange. So I put a little dab on there and was like, oh, man, go over this later. I'm just going to pretend from here on out. I'm, gonna I'm sure he photo. didn't care that you did that. <laughs> um, I know you like to shop just as much as I do. I actually went out yesterday and I saw Christmas decorations. We've been talking, though, about how Halloween candy mm -hmm. is already out in the stores. And it turns out we are not imagining. It is earlier than normal. I've seen it everywhere. Yeah. I've seen it everywhere. The Christmas stuff, too. I've seen that at Home Goods, at the at home store. But. I'm all about it, Heather. I'm ready for Halloween. And this is Hershey. They joined forces with retailers to have their products available earlier because candy makers fear that the pandemic may negatively affect their sales. I, I don't even want to go there yet, but I am worried that oh, I don't even want to say it. I don't want to hear that trick or treating is canceled. Maybe there are creative ways that we can come up with costumes where we have face coverings or, you know, so many costumes have masks. So I hope that I there is a way that this still happens for the kids be able to. and for me. I, me too. I love Halloween. <laughs> I, I love, love dressing it. up. But yeah. I mean, if you're socially distancing, walking 
from house to house. And maybe, you know, homeowners could put the candy in the driveway. They Something. don't even have to be near it. Yeah. I hope that this still happens. I hope I hope that we can get dressed up and have fun. And you know, it makes me think about last year when we were all dressed up for the Wizard of Oz. Uh, Do you remember how much yes. fun that was? <laughs> we need to share Aww. that photo again. I love that so much. That was it was so fun. much fun. All right. Okay. So today is Friday, and that means it's time for our Friday free for all. A lot of great questions came in. <laughs> um, we'll start off with Sherry, and she says you all get along so well in the show. But what happens after the show? Do you spend time with each other when you aren't working? The answer is yes, although mm -hmm. things have changed. Yes, not yeah. so much recently. Yeah. But it, it, that's why it's so great to work with you, David, Ron, Mikey, Jill, everybody on the show, because we do get along so well. Yeah. It's such a nice team, so it's fun when we get to hang out outside of we the studio. We gel really nicely. Yes. Yeah. Um, Roseanne says, since tie-dye is making a comeback, this is a tip, not a question, but she says, get white cloth masks. Make designs with your favorite colors and then let it sit for a while, wash and dry them. And she actually made these with her grandkids. Yeah, I, I've never made anything tie-dye. Never but I've always in your life. To. Never. This I'm sounds sure like a fun have, project, especially Selena. With Lila and Sonny. Not not now, not as an adult. I haven't yet um, because of the mess. I have a problem with messes, people. But when I was a kid, yeah, we made things with tie-dye. I'd love to do it again. We'll have to do some. Masks would be fun to yeah. see tie-dye. So th this question is from Paula. I'm curious about this, too. She says, David, why have you stopped wearing your colorful neckties? And he recorded an answer for us. Here it is. Thanks for asking, Paula. I uh, have not given up on the colorful ties. I will keep wearing colorful ties, uh, always on the news. Uh, but on PTL, you know, because the show is so casual, felt like, you know, sometimes maybe I should be a little bit more casual and lose the tie. So uh, moving forward, I think it's got to be kind of a mix. But I love ties. It's part of who I am. So they won't go away entirely. It's so funny because we were joking. The, so one day this week, he showed up without a tie on and we go, whoa. And someone, who was it? Was it Shum that called him Mr. GQ? Oh, yeah. yeah. So John Shumway calls him Mr. GQ, and that was the running joke for the day. I like it. It's casual. It's sharp. I think he looks great. And, you know, when, when he was doing your Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. he often did not wear a tie for that. So I love the look. It's I like really it, cool. too. And he, if you look, he may not have the tie on, but he still has his fun socks. Yeah. Always has the good socks. He does. And I like <laughs> when you wear your sneakers. I like wearing sneakers, too. Yeah. It's so much more comfortable than these things. Yeah, and look at those red ones today. Uh, well, yeah. Nice. Just jazzing things up for a Friday. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. I like your shoes, Selena. Thank by you. The Where's our shoe cam when we need it? I know. You could see them, though. Fun. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Okay, Elizabeth, this question is for Ron. She says, how many years of schooling does it take to be a meteorologist? I actually want to know this because if sure. I could do anything else, I think it would be that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, it's four years of school. The, uh, the biggest issue, I think, is that you do have to take some uh, pretty difficult math classes in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I think that there's a, a lot of help, especially when you're in college, to get through those math classes as well. Uh, so, but once you get through that, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I kind of miss uh, those old school days. What was your favorite part of, of learning? Like, do you have a favorite class when you were getting into the process? Um, you know, anything about the history, climatology was always interesting. Um, also, uh, one of the classes that I, I guess most places take, I took this at Ball State, was a storm chasing class Ooh. where you actually go out, you spend a summer, about six weeks on the road. Uh, chasing and looking at tornadoes across the Midwest. Ah. So that and you got to do that? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see a real tornado? I, this is, <laughs> we, we've had tornadoes here in Pennsylvania. Right. But, you know, and, and the interesting thing is there, there's some of the classes that you hear and they're like, we didn't see one tornado at all. Uh, actually, uh, my year, we actually got to see a, a, a couple of really good ones. So it was pretty awesome. I think that's fascinating, yeah. Ron. It is. And it, you don't realize how much schooling really goes into becoming a meteorologist yeah. and what you need. He's a smart he guy, a smart that Ron guy. Smiley. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ron. <laughs> Always learning from you, Ron. <laughs> so Darla wants to know, and this is a hard question, what is your favorite place for takeout? Well, we have our go-to in our neighborhood. There are so many wonderful restaurants, so this is not like me picking one over the other, but this is the easiest for us, and we love supporting local, and this is super local for us. So we often order from the Bigham Tavern because it's oh, two so blocks good. from our house. Fabulous yeah. place. And we, it's, it really feels like extended family up there, so we love that vibe. Yeah. What about for you? Oh, man. I, I truly don't know. I have so many favorites because 
because I love to eat and I love going out and trying new restaurants. One of my favorites, though, I would have to say is Little Tokyo. I was going to say, and I didn't love their sushi. You and Mac went on a date there, didn't you? We met there. Yes. See, I knew it had significance. Extra special. I but knew. They do have pretty good sushi. Okay, uh, Bonnie, or Bunny, I'm sorry. I hope that's not a typo and your name is really Bunny. Bunny asks if you could spend time with anyone from your past, who would you choose? Hmm. Do you have an answer to this? And this is a tough question. Tough. Thought provoking. I, think I would choose my dad's parents, my grandparents, Papa Aww. Pat and Grandma Virginia, and my mom's dad, Papa Pete. They were just so wonderful and we miss them every day. And yeah. to be able to have them back and to have a conversation with them again would be cool. That would be really nice. What about Aww. you? Selena, that's such a touching answer. I, well, I thought about this ahead of time, and I wasn't sure if it was living or not, so I chose ahead of time uh, my old friends from, you know, back when I was like nine years old, Susie, Susie, Mickey, CJ, and my sister. Oh, we used to play. We used to play so much and run around our neighborhood, ride our bikes. I remember this one time, someone told us in the neighborhood there was a bubblegum tree, and I remember going on an adventure on our bikes looking for the bubblegum tree. Oh, we, we had a blast, so. You should, yeah. you should reconnect with all of them. I think I should, too. That would too. be fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, you may have a question about what to do with flowers and veggies that did not survive our heat wave and drought. So everything is wilted right now in Brown. I don't know about your yard, but mine oh, yes. is in it's rough not shape. not looking too good. So up next on PTL, Doug Oster is here with the answers. He's outside our PTL studio with Mikey Hood with ways to perk up your flower pots and keep your veggie garden growing. We're going to check in with them next. We are also checking in with Penguin, our PTL pup. Oh, this looks so refreshing. He is coming to us live from the beach where he learned to swim in the ocean this week. We will see what else he's been up to on vacation just ahead. And get ready to exercise with us for our last day of the PTL Summer Shape Up. We wrap it up with one more workout assignment from fitness pro Aubrey Ward to help us look and feel our best. That and much more ahead this hour on PTL as we head into the weekend this Friday, August 14th, 2020. Thanks for being with us.